we went for a walk around the building and then we went back to the visitor center because I just sort of felt that there was a something there. And um, we do have a spirit box. We use some, you know, uh, technical tools. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. What what they are. I don't I don't know. So basically they have uh, their frequency. Uh, they, they, they basically scan through 700 radio channels frequency. Um, and obviously radio people talk. So there's voices and they go, sure. and you'll have little voices. And um, it's believed that the spirits, and I believe it very strongly now because I've seen the evidence, that they can actually uh, um, talk to to you through these frequencies. Through these frequencies, yeah. Um, so we use that. And um, quite often at the time, you try to listen. You're not always picking everything up. But uh, we kept, picked up a guy called Paul who went over and over and he could, Kept saying that he was there, and then all of a sudden, this is on one of your videos. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did you? Say? I'm like, I'm like, where have I heard this? <laughs> yeah, this, this, I watched this video. <laughs> it was only meant to be an intro. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Um, and it, it was quite funny because, um, um, you know, I could I could feel his presence. Um, I tried to find out more about him, and I, I, he wasn't sort of coming forth, but I could definitely feel him. And at one point, um, we also have a, a K2 meter, which is a electric uh, magnetic. A meter, which, um, admittedly, you put it up against the wall where there's a power point, it's going to start. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, but you can hold it out. So electrical yeah. fields. Correct. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And spirits, again, when they come close to that, because their energy will make that spike, and uh, and it was spiking, and and you can ask them. So look, if you're here, Paul, if that's you that I'm talking to, Paul, can you make the K two meter spike? Um, and and it was. On whenever I asked him to, he he lit it up, um, and then he gave me a big bear hug. To the point that I was actually, and you can ask Lulu this, so I was actually having trouble breathing. It was like really, and I could just, it was like I was going to come but, up to you. But it was more from a place of an affection rather than. There was no, I didn't feel any negative energy. No, no, it was quite, um, I'm not going to say I enjoyed the hug like because <laughs> yeah. from Paul, but you know, it was yeah. like, yeah, it was like he was showing me I'm here. And, uh, um, and then I said, mate, just please let go. And then bang, you know, off it went. And ironically, um, I said, look, do you want us to leave? And and it spiked. And I said, look, you need to respect that. So yeah. we did leave. Um, and as we walked out, um, the the bells went off on the, the big clock in Fremantle. And it was all, it was actually quite, quite interesting. But they were meant to go off or they? Oh, it might have been that time. I'm not sure. But it was just oh, ironic. At that, that time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I guess it just made it interesting. But what, what happened later was a friend of mine um, was having a look at the raw footage as I was editing it. He goes, can you just go back? And I said, okay. Here we go. <laughs> and there's a face in the window. Um, and it is a, a very um, – and prior to that, Lulu was doing the camera work. She went up to the window, that particular window, looked through it and everything, and then walked off. There, it wasn't there. Now, there was a face, a, a big, burly, bald-headed guy looking down over my shoulder, which is where the window was behind me. Now, I didn't see it. In fact, it was my friend that picked it up when he saw the raw footage as I was editing it, because he came over for a beer and we were editing and I was saying, look, we, we did this last night and let's go back, have a look at that. 